Welcome to the inaugural presentation of Continuum Meditations Discusses. Let's talk about this recent addition to the Lucasfilm franchise, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. We have a mission for you. A major weapons test is imminent. We need to know what it is and how to destroy it. Greetings, Master Jedi, Dark Lords of the Sith, general Star Wars fans, and all interested parties. In this review of Rogue One A Star Wars Story, I am in fact going to be discussing the movie. I am going to be discussing it both generally and specifically, and so there will be spoilers in this review. If for whatever reasons you have not yet seen the movie, and you don't want to be spoiled, of course I would recommend that you steer clear of this review until you have had a chance to do so. If, however, you don't want to see the movie for whatever reasons and you still want to get a review, or if you want to go forward for whatever other reasons are involved, then let's do so because I am ready to get started. So I thought I'd start with a general overview of what the movie was about, and then we'll go and launch in from there. Rogue One, A Star Wars Story is set in the prequel era before the events of Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, and after the events of Star Wars Episode III, Revenge of the Sith. It stars Felicity Jones as lead character Jen Erso, who is sent on a mission by the fledgling Rebel Alliance of the Era to steal the plans for the Imperial Galactic Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star. Erso, as we come to know her, is a reluctant heroine who has faced adversity early in life at the death of her mother and the kidnapping and forced conscription of her father by Imperial hands. She's spent the bulk of her childhood and teen years being an involuntary insurgent against the Empire and later, in her young adult years, a career criminal responsible for committing everything from assault to possession of stolen weaponry. Urso is, by all measures, a survivor of the hard times inflicted upon her, but she is also a wounded woman suffering abandonment issues after being left behind by her father when she was still just a little girl. And this leads us further. Jen Urso's father is Galen Urso, an Imperial scientist responsible for conceiving and building the Death Star. He has been forced into this role for nearly two decades by its project director Orson Krennic, a megalomaniac with an inferiority complex and a desire to elevate himself in the hierarchy of the Empire's social structure. Galen Urso, at his heart, is a defector, a refusenik who only agrees to obey Krennic's demands in order to spare his daughter's life and save the existence of billions across the galaxy from the Death Star's destructive potential. Now, once the Rebel Alliance learns the Death Star is nearing operational effectiveness, Jen Erso is conscripted to find her father and enlist his cooperation in smuggling the basis plans to them. This is the basis for the action-adventure film Rogue One, and how Jen goes on to enlist a ragtag band of wily soldiers on a one-way mission to save the future of the Rebel Alliance and the freedom of the galaxy. Now from here, I thought I would go on to talk about some of the things that I liked and disliked about Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Let me start off with uh, talking about the things that I did not like about the movie, uh, and then we'll go into the things that I did, in fact, enjoy about Rogue One, because the things that I enjoyed about Rogue One definitely outweighed and overshadowed those things that I did not enjoy about it. First, let me just get off my chest the fact that, for me, the score of this movie was mediocre and lackluster at best. Um, I found the music composed by Michael, Michael uh, Giacchino, I believe his name is, I think that's how you pronounce it. I found the score to be uh, uninspired in my opinion and it really did not leave me with any kind of emotional high except for maybe a few instances here and there. Now, a lot of people were trying to suggest that they wanted to hear something that was similar to John Williams, but my rationale was, why do we want to hear John Williams' light, L-I-T-E, uh, when this is supposed to be, this, this movie is supposed to be an anthology movie, as Lucasfilm is calling it. Why do we want to hear John Williams' light in these compositions? Why not hear something different? In fact, that perhaps might even be considered totally different from what we were used to hearing in the grand operatic adventures uh, that John Williams normally gives us when he composes uh, for Star Wars. 
it was lackluster at best. Now, at the same time, I did not believe that this was the gritty kind of music that we heard in some of the trailer music. Uh, I, in fact, thought that some of the trailer music would potentially be used in the movie itself, and I did not hear that, and so I was a bit disappointed uh, at the score uh, overall. Uh, I would have preferred stronger themes, and for example, I cite some of the themes that were used in the Lord of the Rings trilogies. Uh, trilogy uh, as a kind of example of the types of themes I would have preferred to have heard for this Rogue One movie uh, with of course being set in a Star Wars universe. At best to me the score is best heard when you listen to it while watching the movie itself. To me the score for Rogue One A Star Wars Story is not something that you can listen to and have an audible experience separate and distinct apart from the actual movie itself. And if you want to make this comparison with John Williams, I think you can go further by saying many of John Williams scores, whether they are scores for something like Indiana Jones or Jaws or Star Wars or any other or E.T. the Extraterrestrial, some of his more famous scores that I'm mentioning there, Superman. You can listen to these scores apart from the movie and you can still enjoy an audible experience that is pleasing to the ears, that takes the, uh, the, the soul and the heart to the heights and the depths of experience and, and you can still be pleased by what is going on. With this particular score, I did take the chance or take the opportunity to listen to it without watching the movie and I just got to say, quite frankly, folks may agree or disagree, but I was bored. I know Michael Giacchino is inspired by John Williams, and I think I have read and or heard that he said he wanted to try to emulate John Williams with, uh, with Star Wars, but I really think that that was actually the wrong motivation, the wrong goal. I think he should have tried to distinguish himself from John Williams, and I think that if he gets a chance to compose for another Star Wars movie, I hope to hear him do something that is Chikino, not John Williams Light. Finally, let's talk about in terms of criticism, the CGI of Grand Moff Tarkin and Princess Leia. Now, this is a very, very minor criticism. I think that, that overall with this, the digital arts department did a, a reasonably good job of CGIing uh, Peter Cushing, who has been long dead for decades now, uh, in his original role as Grand Moff Tarkin from A New Hope. And I think they did a reasonably good job of CGIing in a very much younger um, the Princess Leia, the Carrie Fisher, and she would not have been right for you know, trying to do that role again. Um, now, there were times when you could, in fact, tell that it was CGI. Uh, I think especially maybe uh, around the eyes, perhaps some of the mouth movements and things of this nature, but generally speaking, it was it was pretty good, and I think it's only gonna get better as time goes on. So let's get to those things that I found far more positive than I found negative about this movie. The other thing that I really liked about this, this new format that, uh, that Lucasfilm explored was the fact that they named the planets that we visited, and they told us where we were going specifically with respect to being on those planets and why we were there overall. Now that's not to say that they could not have developed that a little bit further, but the fact that they used this format, which is new for Star Wars, was very good to me and it, I think once again it helps to set this movie apart from the other stories that we have seen so far in the Star Wars franchise. Oh, so what about the characters? I'm going to start with Cassian Andor. Now, for me, Cassian Andor was a very interesting character. Uh, the fact that he was not uh, one of these, you know, pristine guys that we kind of come to associate with uh, with the Rebel Alliance. He's a guy who's kind of gritty. He's kind of, you know, he's kind of underhanded. He he's uh, he's a guy who, hey, let's face it, this is a guy who will shoot one of his own informants in the back. I mean, hey, we've never seen anybody in the Rebel Alliance do anything that serious and hardcore before. And the fact that he was willing to do that just to ensure that this guy could not escape, or should I say that he would not inform on him and give 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 Endor himself away uh, when, he, when this guy realized that he could no longer escape, 
that was a hardcore move on Cassian Andor's part, and that was something that I found to be very intriguing that set him apart from the jump in this movie. And I just, I when I was watching that in the in the in the um, in the theater, I went, whoa! I mean, that was. You've never seen that in Star Wars before. People willing to get that hardcore. So this actually shows to me the grit of the Rebellion, some of what the Rebellion has, really has to endure when we're talking about uh, going up against something as, as fiendish and as overwhelming and as mighty as the Empire. Uh, and, I'm, and you're seeing the Rebellion have to do some unsavory things. Cassian Andor was, in fact, asked to assassinate Galen Erso when he found him, and he was, in fact, quite frankly, asked to use Jen Urso as a means to help him find Galen so that he could do just that, to kill the man. The Rebel Alliance did not want to take any uh, any chances that Galen Urso's research could be used to advance the Death Star project any further, and since it was going to be going operational any time from now, they wanted to make sure that Galen Urso was not going to be there to help it become operational. So instead of trying to retrieve him so that he, he could help them destroy the Death Star, Cassian Andor was given orders, hey, you, the first chance you get, you wipe this man out and you do it without hesitation. And I really like the fact about that Cassian Andor was, at least at first, willing to go through that. The other thing I liked about Andor was he had indicated that he has been in the resistance, or that is, in the rebellion against the Empire since he was six years old. This guy has been a child soldier, in other words, and it kind of reminded me of some of the child soldiers that in real in the real world and you know in places like Somalia and Afghanistan and other parts of the world. But this guy has been a child soldier since he was a, a boy, okay, fighting against the Galactic Empire. And that to me, and here again is a, is another a criticism of character development that I'll go into just much just just briefly. That to me was a point where we could have taken some more time to learn a little bit more about the motivation of this guy. If you've been fighting for that long, I mean, he looks like he's probably, what, a late 20, early 30-something guy in the movie. If you've been fighting for basically the last 25 years of your life uh, against uh, an imperialistic force, you are going to be a person who has done some, some really serious things that are going to be so disturbing uh, and that are going to tear and eat at you that maybe you don't want to necessarily talk about and want other people to know. I would like to have seen some more things or at least heard some more things from Cassian Andor about his time in the rebellion and some of the other things that he has done on behalf of freedom and, and fighting against the Empire. Shooting a guy in the back was a way to show it, not just tell it. But I would like to have seen and heard some other things from Andor on this point. And so this to me was actually a point of character development that I wanted to get a little bit more meat about. But I liked the character Cassian Andor because they were in fact willing to show somebody who was willing to go the distance in the fight for freedom.